All right, where we last left off. Our heroes. I'm sure it'll just recap it for you. I don't need to tell you shit. Do you guys want the uh, mouse on or off screen? Standing here in the bright sunshine, <laughs> looking out over the vast ocean. It always fucks me up that they're British. Seem like a dream. I mean, obviously but they're I do British, miss but my time in England's vast capital. You know, he's flourished into a truly wonderful lawyer. I've no doubt that at this very moment, he's fighting some noble cause in court. <clears throat> Forgive me for taking so long to come to visit you. My life has been such a whirlwind since I returned. Well, he ain't going anywhere. And no one could have predicted what has happened. Just two months after arriving home. I find myself faced with another awful crime. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh! This bitch! Ooh! <clears throat> so I came here today to ask something of you. Tomorrow? I shall be standing in court for the only time in my life as a lawyer. <gasps> what? There's only one explanation for that. Ryanosuke is the expect. What the so fuck? Please, I ask for your guidance. Kazuma sama. Oh, she wasn't even talking to her dead dad. She was talking to Kazuma. That means she's back in England because they buried Kazuma in England, right? That explains why she's in court. No. Wait. No. Okay. I've now figured it out. That woman was on an exchange program. We are in Japanese court. Okay. Ugh. Here I am again after nine months, the Supreme Court of Judicature of Japan. I feel so nervous, but I must steal my nerves and find a way to compose myself. Cords of steel. She's British, but we're in Japan, yeah? She has a British accent. She's Japanese. It doesn't do for a lawyer to be late. Oh, yes, um, good morning, sir. I hardly recognize you. You cut a fine figure, counsel. All right, don't hit on me. But you look as white as a sheet, and those white eyes of yours aren't doing you any favor either. Oh, dear. The truth is, I'm so incredibly nervous, I feel utterly nauseated. I almost wish I'd never been born. Goodness, not the sort of thing a father hopes to hear from his daughter, I must say. Well, I don't think a daughter hopes to hear you look great from your dad. Yujin Mikitoba, professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University. A man who earlier in life traveled to Great Britain to study the latest advances in forensic medical science. And of course, my brilliant father. Um, excuse me? Oh. Oh, this is the murderer. <clears throat> I mean, the alleged murderer. I want to thank you for agreeing to represent me. I swear on my life. It's a, comp a complete fabrication. This whole thing. All right. Okay. Ray Membambi. Okay. What's the joke here? Raymond. Raymond Bobby. Bammy. Remember me. Remember me. Remember me is how you remember me. Stupid. Dumb. Born the same year as I and my greatest friend. Though unusual for a woman in our time, she works at a university research laboratory helping my father. Scandalous. And sadly, she's the defendant in today's trial, accused of committing a truly awful murder. Are you feeling all right? Since we started talking, you seem, well, to have become a little flut. Jesus Christ. L uh, le lesbian? You look so gallant. Wow, she really is gay. Whoa. Holy shit. Oh, she hasn't realized who I am. Ha 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 ha. It would seem our plan for this trial is going to work. 
Even your best friend can't see through the disguise. I think we can relax. We're wearing a disguise? What? Is that you, Suzato? No! What are you doing? <laughs> you look for all the world like just a student of the Imperial Yume University. A male student! Oh, fuck. Are we cross-dressing because women can't be lawyers? <laughs> this, this kicks ass. This is so good. The, I mean, honestly, uh, it's peak. I don't know what to say. It's peak. It's it's Kino. It's fire. Ugh. You mean to tell me I got a woman lawyer? Oh. Jesus. But women are forbidden. Just for today, I'll be leaving my true self at the courtroom door. I, I think it'll come out over the course of it that that she's actually a woman. So that I can act as your lawyer. Oh, Susato! <laughs> of course, you're my greatest friend. I just worry I shan't be the lawyer you deserve. Oh, you're going to be fine. What a wretched reason. Why shouldn't you be allowed in court? You're so gallant and that she's... Man, she really is gay. Uh, Ray. Please don't look at me like... Oh my god! <laughs> I mean, what do you say, right? What are you supposed to say? This is... I, wow. Yes, you mentioned that once or twice. Uh, I'm actually going to move myself up here. So that you all can see all the text. This is MBT and Danny. It is, yeah. Ray. More like gay. <laughs> You believe me, don't you? Of course! A lawyer always believes in their clients! That was wrong. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind about your innocence. Which is why I'll stand by you until the bitter end in this trial. Whatever happens, I'll always be on your side. Because that's what it means to be a defense lawyer! We learned that last game. Alright, let's go. All right, who are we facing? Is it going to be Japanese pain? <clears throat> but father! You haven't told her yet, have you? I mean, I'm right in assuming Ray doesn't know how it came to this. Yes, quite right. I've kept that information for her. Yep, yeah, I figured no other lawyer would, would agree to take the case, right? I don't want to burden her with that. And is it true? The reason? Is it really because of who the victim was? Yeah, it's a fucking English woman. We should be making a move on it. Law isn't my field, but I'll do what I can to support my student. Oh, he's going to be our, um, our little guy in the corner. Ryunosuke. Oh, it is. It's Japanese pain. This court is now in session to hear the trial of Ray Membami. The prosecution is fully ready to proceed, Your Excellency. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, Your Excellency, we are ready. Ready? Uh, yes, counsel. According to your registration details, your name is Erm... Um, Ryutaro. 
Naruhodo. Is that correct? Um, sorry. Oh, yes. I had to come up with a suitable male name for you for this little venture. So, afraid to say, I simply put down the first name that sprung to mind. Well, Council? Yes, that's right. That's me. I'm... Yes, I am Ryutaro. He who has vowed to uphold the pride of the great Naruhodo clan. Ah. May need to consider how to better uphold his manly act first and not overdo it. And those wild, wide eyes aren't doing you any favors either. Just relax and listen. Naruhodo? A fresh face in this courtroom, if I'm not mistaken. But the name Naruhodo, would that perchance be... You may be thinking of Ryunosuke Naruhodo, currently in Britain as part of a study program. This is, um, his cousin. That's right, Ryu... Ryutaro here has been studying for the provinces, but was called to the capital on trial. I assure you, in matters of law, his knowledge rivals that of any of Tokyo's preeminent lawyers. Any of them! Tut, tut, tut. What a pitiful situation. Having been rejected by every lawyer in the capital, the accused had to call in a country boy. How dare you? Oh, bo 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 bo. shut the fuck up. Her? Oh, um, er. Shut the fuck up, you stinking ass bitch. <laughs> what an unrefined tomboy we have here. But I wonder, is your gallant and dashing lawyer up to the challenge of defending you? His wide, skittish eyes very much suggest that he is not. Fuck you. <clears throat> like it or not, eyes are wont to flit. Okay. The case to be heard on this day is a matter of great significance to our national interests. In fact, it would be reasonable to assume that the outcome of this trial may well affect the very future of our empire. Just like the trial nine months ago. And yet for proceedings of such importance, we have this unknown yokel by the dock. Dear me. Hmm. Perhaps this would be an appropriate moment for me to assess the defense. To determine whether you are sufficiently competent to practice in this courtroom. Okay, fucking guy. I'll do the tutorial. <clears throat> yes, of course. Ooh! All right. <laughs> She's doing the Ryanosuke shit. Yes, Your Excellency, but please do make them simple. Very well, to start with, you will state the name of the victim. Oh, fucking Christ. <laughs> it's not surprising, really. It's your first time in this position, and in that guise. Don't fret. You need only use the knowledge you've gained as a judicial assistant to overcome the problem. Of course, the court record. Giselle Brett. The name of the victim who lost her life in the case is Miss Giselle Brett. Giselle Brett. Correct. And being a member of our Empire's judiciary, you will be well aware of the significance of that name. So, as you know, Miss Brett was a visiting student from the Empire of Great Britain. Why, then, is her name in de in in indelibly? How, why do I not know this word? Associated with our own empire's judicial history. I don't fucking know. What do you mean? Because she is a murderer. <clears throat> Behind the woman student persona was the face of a killer of Queen Victoria. Yes! Yes! I like her. Ooh, she's already got the slam down. Nine months ago, a visiting professor of medicine at the Imperial Yume University was killed. And the culprit was Giselle Brett. Yes, she was a killer. A 
At the time, our country had just signed a friendship agreement with Great Britain, and it was in the midst of this delicate diplomatic situation the incident occurred. An Englishman, Dr. John H. Wilson, was shot dead. He was an associate of yours, Professor Mikitopa? Yes, I was indebted to the man. He'd been my mentor when I went to London to study forensic medicine. Indeed, it was I who invited him here to Japan as a visiting professor at the university. Naturally, the murder of an Englishman on our soil was a matter the government wished to resolve rapidly. Indeed it was, which is why a secret trial was conducted here at the Supreme Court. A student of the Imperial Yume University was arrested on suspicion of murder, a second-year English-language student by the name of Ryanosuke Naruhodo. With the help of his best friend, a student lawyer, the accused conducted his own defense and exposed the despicable crime. This bread admitted to her crime. When questioned about the motive, she gave no satisfactory answer. Immediately after the trial, the British government brought its consular jurisdiction into play. We were unable to send us Miss Brett according to our empire's laws. It was decided that she would be removed to Shanghai, China, instead. Why Shanghai? There's a British consular court there. Correct. I oversaw the negotiations personally. The date of her transfer to Shanghai was finally settled upon only last week. All that remained of our empire's obligations was to see the woman safely on board a steamship. And yet, the very day before her departure, the English woman was killed. Only the day before? This doesn't stink to any of you. I'm satisfied that the counsel for the defense is sufficiently capable of representing the defendant. Oh, good. That shit was way easy. Thank you, Your Excellency. Now, a summary of the incident, if you please. Prosecutor Ouchie. As is your wish, Your Excellency. The repugnant crime took place on the 11th of August in broad daylight. On the outskirts of the Imperial capital, under a bright blue sky at a secluded bathing spot by the sea, the incident occurred in a small beach hut erected for bathers to rest or change their clothes. The cause of death was a single stab wound to the posterior abdomen that pierced the victim's lung. There were two persons together alone in the beach hut at the time of the victim's death, Miss Brett and the accused. Fuck. Ugh, she had a motive. Hmm. I want to know about the motive. I have no idea what the motive is. Powerful motive is a blatant overstatement. Tut, tut, tut. Is that Yoko boy using long words he doesn't fully understand? I beg your pardon? No matter. Let us put this to the accused, shall we? Remember me, son. You are a research assistant at the Imperial Yume University, I believe. Yes, I am. I'm working with Professor Mikitoba in his laboratory at the moment. I can confirm that. The defendant is an excellent assistant with a strong sense of responsibility. Fascinating to hear. Now another question. Prior to your work with Professor Mikitoba, whose research were you- Oh, fuck. That would be Professor John Wilson. What's the motive is revenge? The accused had a deep-seated respect for her former mentor, Dr. Wilson. Is that not true? Uh, yeah, Dr. Wilson was a wonderful man. Interesting. Uh, tell the court what deep-seated feelings you had toward the English woman who killed him. Well, obviously I was filled with hatred for what she'd done. A powerful hatred. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Shut, shut, shut the fuck up. Ah. The motive was revenge. Plain and simple, Your Excellency. Hmm. Well, it was clearly a trap all along. How wicked of him. Uh, let's do some cross X. Let's try the bathing spot. If I may, Prosecutor Ouchie. What do you want? 
I wonder, could you explain, please? You mentioned a bathing spot. Huh, my apologies. Clearly my modernity has confused the poor country bumpkin's simple mind. I'm gonna kill this guy. Bathing spots are the very latest trend in health practices from the West. We are told that bathing in the water of the ocean is curative, therapeutic, and excellent for the skins. No, that's, I know what bathing is. I was referring to the fact that Miss Brett had to, for, uh, to all intents and purposes, been found guilty of murder. Why would a known criminal have been relaxing by the sea? For old time's sake, I believe. Miss Brett was to depart for Shanghai the following day. Her final wish, as it were, was to enjoy a day at our country's wonderful coast. And the British Embassy put extreme pressure on our government to comply. Interesting. Why did we say yes to that? Uh, because our government is unable to stand up to foreign powers. Huh. Learning a lot here today. <clears throat> Don't look at me, Professor. It was the government who granted permission, not I. In any case, it was decided with a dedicated detective on duty, nothing could go wrong. I said, don't look at me. It was that young student girl who did it, not I. No one has proved that yet. I wouldn't provoke that man if you don't need to. All right, well, last one is being alone together, so let's check it out. Remember me, Sam. Now, hold us on. <laughs> right. Please tell the court why exactly you were present at the bathing spot with the victim in the first place and why you were alone with her. Oh, let's get some testimony. That's not true. It wasn't like that at all. There were other people present. A detective who was guarding Miss Brett, for starters. I was asked to accompany Miss Brett as a companion. What the fuck? But let us be clear. Oh, let me be clear. At the moment of her death, you were alone together. The truth is, there is only one reason why this young woman accompanied Miss Brett to her bathing sojourn. It was the accused last chance to take the victim's life. Shut up. Because, as we know... The following day would see Miss Brett extradited to the British authorities in Shanghai. Shut the fuck up. And the accused would never have an opportunity to dispatch of her again. Kindly refrain from conjecture, counsel. <laughs> Alright, let's get some fucking... What the fuck? She was just... Oh, you know what it was? It was probably the thing we were looking at on Quimby. I, it, was she the birthday girl? Because if she if she was the little birthday girl, then she would get away with it. Yeah. <clears throat> Seeing the murder of the mentor for whom she had such great respect, enjoying such undeserved liberty. Yes, you have to you have to kill her. That's the only option. So, Your Excellency. If you'd be so kind as to peruse this exhibit, a photographic print... Ugh, we just got photos. All right, put that shit in the court record. Um, that is not good. Wow, that's, like, really bad. Female, comma, British. <laughs> Time of death, 11 August, around 2. Single stab wound from behind, piercing a lung. Extreme mitosis, pupil constriction. Both eyes. I'm still with you. Hmm. I mean, I can see a place someone would have hidden. Why can't we object to stuff being added to evidence? see anything too interesting here. The pen is really fucking me up, though. Oh, you know what actually is true? Is we should be able to see footprints of the person who killed her, right? Hmm. All right, bring him out. I assure you, the testimony of these witnesses will leave no room for doubt.
<laughs> this insult to the ouchie family name will never be forgotten. I don't give a fuck. I do not, I do not care. Oh, wow, and he's worn his hair like that ever since. That's crazy. <laughs> Strike the head of a samurai whose top knot has been cut and the bell of cultural enlightenment tolls. Yes, on that fateful day, my former self died. Are you modernizing as well, Council? Silence! Since I swore revenge back then, there has been a minor miracle atop my head. Observe the ouchy growth. You see the seed of hope sprouting forth from the barren expanse of my crown. Uh, what's going on? Today I face another yokel student. Well, I will vanquish you and my victory will be fertilizer for the seed of hope atop my head. You have been warned. <laughs> this guy fucking kicks ass. It looks like, uh, I, I guess he really does not want to go bald. A haircut is hardly comparable to Ray's life. <laughs> Good. Awesome. Oh my god, my two favorite characters. Fucking hell, let's go! Chief Inspector Satoru Hosonaga, Imperial Police Bureau. I'm in disguise, obviously, so I can go undetected. He's taped a turtle to his head. And my favorite guy. And I am, well... The next big thing in books. An author renowned through the capital, in fact, yes. Soon to be sold out, the satirical I am a cat, a sensational success by Soseki Natsume. Oh my god, there's a guy behind him. Holy shit. Struggling student from the provinces, please. You needn't be an author. I needn't. It's only natural you'd feel nervous in my presence, but all of you, please relax. Call me Soseki even. He's doing a lot better. He's doing a lot better. Tread carefully. That author fellow knows you from all your time in London, doesn't he? If he exposes you for who you really are, this will be over before it's begun. Yes, of course. I presume Soseki-san won't have forgotten about me. I could certainly never forget him. Although he does seem to have changed someone in the six months or so that it's been since I last saw him. He has not only escaped the curse of the Reaper, he has also... escaped the curse of living in Britain, which has made him very happy. And Hosanaga looks exactly the same. Uh, though he's not coughing blood, which is nice. Ah, I suppose it's the disguise, is it? I thought that appearing here in the clothes I was wearing at the time would make for a more faithful testimony. It is my guiding principle to carry out all testimonies flawlessly. Okay. Why is Soseki-san there? Ah, well, you see. I had been asked that day to give a lecture. On the morning of the incident, in the Imperial Yume University's Grand Lecture Hall, no less. At Yume University? After the lecture, I had a very pleasant conversation with a researcher from the medical science department. The professor over there, in fact. With, with Professor Mikitoba? Uh, yes, that's right. I, it was arranged by one of the newspapers. They wanted some story or other about two former students who'd studied in Great Britain. Of course, being a renowned author, the press never leave me alone. They secretly spy, snap shots, scribble stories, and scupper my privacy. Huh. <laughs> As you can see, the conversation was written up in this newspaper here. All right, we'll take a look. Oh, he's... They're having a good fucking time. Holy shit. They're having a good time. Uh... Huh. Well, I'm not seeing anything particularly interesting, to be honest. It's kind of weird that the camera lens is cracked, but whatever. He's still bleeding. I'm at peak physical fitness at the moment, so I was able to carry out my duty flawlessly. Uh, Inspector, you 
Well, you have something on your face. Ugh, how unsightly. I do apologize. Hmm. Ah, but if I only had, I'd never have seen that awful sight! Relentlessly racked by remorse and regret! He's great. I love him. <clears throat> oh. You alright, dude? On the day of the incident, I was ordered on a special surveillance assignment in this disguise. I just managed to catch that crab. What crab? When I suddenly heard a caterwaul from behind me. I ran to the beach hut at once, where I found the pair in question. Yes, yes, yes. That young girl was astride the Englishwoman, dagger in hand, as she stabbed wildly. I saw blood on the blade. It proved to me she'd... Mm, already a problem. What the fuck is this? A fountain pen? Correct, Your Excellency. I found it at the scene whilst examining the body. In her dying moments, with her final ounce of strength, the victim clutched a piece of evidence that would positively identify her killer. God. Yeah. The fountain pen. Great. <sighs> okay, let's fuck around with this thing. No, we're fine. I don't understand. I had none of this man's boys. Come on, do the thing. Yeah! That means... Oh, yes! Me! Is there another Narahodo in my courtroom? Uh, well, um, <laughs> there is not one. Cousin Ryuoto, pull yourself together. Ryutaro. Okay, we can do this. We can do this. I already see the inconsistency. We're fine. Objection! Objection! <laughs> She's cute. <laughs> That accusatory cry that just welled up from deep inside me, I think I finally understand. Every time Kazuma-san and Naruhodo-san have stood here at this bench, the stakes have been very high indeed. Uh, well, what's the meaning of that menacing pose, counsel? I'd like the witness to clarify something for me. Who? What? Where? When? How? <laughs> I love him. He's so good. Not useless, I guess. This is directed at Inspector Hosonaga. At me? In your statement just now, you said that the victim was stabbed multiple times. Yes, that's right. As I said, when I entered the hut, the defendant was already standing over the victim, bloody knife in hand, like a murderous demon. And yet, that cannot be. <gasps> what? Get to the point, please, counsel. In the post-mortem report, it clearly states that the victim was stabbed one time only. Ah! Ah! <coughs> In other words, Inspector Hosonaga's testimony is clearly flawed. Ugh! And Soseki-san! You claim to have seen Mememi-san in the throes of stabbing the victim. Uh, yes, I did. Wildly! But both you and the Inspector confirm the same point. There was already blood on the knife you saw the defendant holding. Yes, and? It's quite simple. We know the murder weapon was used to stab the victim only once. Therefore, there is no way there could have been blood on the knife if that single stabbing hadn't already occurred. True! 
Then what is your contention, Council? Are you ever going to tell us? Yes, Your Excellency. There's one logical conclusion. What Soseki-san saw was not the moment the defendant stabbed the victim at all, but the moment the defendant had, in fact, withdrew the blade from the victim's body. That, that can't be! Excellent work, Susato. Objection! Objection! I love him. <laughs> well, well, this takes me back. Yes, I seem to remember your cousin staged a scene much like this in trial nine months ago. A half-witted child with a half-baked objection attempting to steal the show. There were certain similarities. The slander! My head is quite adequately dressed. In any case, all this talk of stabbing and withdrawing in multiple wounds, it makes not a jot of difference. What? Why not? Engage your brain, young man. When the accused first plunged the deadly weapon into the victim, that was the fatal blow. And it was that moment, just as she had withdrawn the blade ready for her next strike, the witnesses saw. Uh, no? Oh, come on. This is bullshit. If she was withdrawing the blade, then we're back where we started. Consider this, young yokel boy. If the student girl is, in is innocent as you claim, why would you have pulled the blade from the victim? And with a demon's cold-blooded composure, too. Probably because she was like, what the fuck, there's a knife in this person. Hmm. Going for the jugular. Oh! I have no idea! I save her? According to the postmortem report, the victim's death was not instant. That's correct. It's thought she would have remained conscious for a short while after sustaining the injury. Indeed, giving her the time to take hold of this piece of shut the fuck up. The point is, being a medical research assistant, my mom, Memembami, Membami san, was compelled to act when faced with a wounded victim. Instinctively, she pulled the blade out in an attempt to save her life. <laughs> Did you hear that, Your Excellency? Hmm. Indeed. Ugh. What? Wait, why didn't they like that one? If I may? I would like another opportunity to testify. Slipshod? Uh-oh. What did I fuck up? Pulling a blade from the wound without thinking could cause heavy bleeding. It's basic fuck. Shit. <laughs> this is why yokels should stay on the phone. Well, I, I've never done that, so. <laughs> hmm. Why did she do it? No. You must believe in your client. Okay, time for cross X. Oh, Jesus. All right. I understand. Here we go. Pulling a blade from a wound without thinking can cause Hold heavy bleeding. Does that mean if you use due care and attention, it would be all right? I wouldn't have thought this needed spelling out, but the blade is like a star. Okay, all right, I get it. Shut the fuck up. God, that guy 
guy is such an asshole. Hold it. <laughs> uh, this is the I'm too drunk, Your Honor. Young people today. Oh. oh, I don't like this animation. Hold it. Yeah, I agree. This is this is a decent one. It inverted actions can explain this. Irrational behavior is a woman's prerogative, isn't it? That's what I'm saying! <laughs> oh dear, you have a lot to learn about women. But I was under the impression that bitches be shopping. Only a small-minded man could have such bigoted views. Oh, they're fucking her up. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Hold it. whatever the motive, it just isn't in Membami san's nature to do something so awful. Fuck. Attention. No. This is the last one I can press on. Hold it. Let's see if we can get something else out of him here. Well, yes, that's true. Dr. Wilson recognized Membami-san's talent and offered her the position of assistant despite her being a woman. She was grateful to him. I know how to examine evidence. not have the Okay, let's read that article again. Following a lecture by at Yume by Soseki Natsume, it's come to light a very disturbing incident took place. A deadly poison being developed in the university's forensic science laboratory was stolen. The smallest amount entering the body, either via the mouth or a wound from a poison-laced blade, fatal in minutes. Current methods cannot detect the chemical. Onset of symptoms occurs in minutes, starting with impaired breathing and ending with... Oh!
Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna... I think this is what I do here. Objection. Music didn't stop. I'm trying to... inform them of what's happening here. Present this. <clears throat> hmm. How do I do this? Um... Objection. There's not like a good place to to present this. I mean, I feel like it's this one. Oh, wait, we can examine this now? We couldn't before. There was poison in this. I've figured out this entire case, but I don't know how to <laughs> how to talk to this guy about it. Stab him with the pen. Yeah. Okay. 
protection. Nope. Okay, let's think critically about this. So what are we trying to convince the judge? That actually, she had been stabbed a single time and the blade was poisoned. And we have both the vial in which the poison was contained. And that's it. Objection! Man, I like that one. There's no real heavy bleeding on this picture. Objection. I just don't understand why it's not here. I don't understand why it's not... There's no other reason she would have pulled it out and then showing the poison article. Right? Like, I don't understand why it's not present here poison article Objection. are you fucking with me isn't this the first thing that i did i feel like this is the first thing that i did and it didn't work i've just been floundering around this i'm like well it's not this i thought it would be this holy shit in this newspaper article about a deadly poison having having been stolen. Objection! Objection! Relevance. But, Prosecutor Ouchie, you will let the defense speak. Okay. Oh yeah, we can do that. The reason, the article where it says, deadly in tiny quantities. When the toxin enters the body on a knife laced with the poison, it's absorbed and causes death in minutes. Are you suggesting if the knife used to mis uh, attack Miss Brett was laced with this poison, it would explain why the defendant would have withdrawn the blade as soon as possible. The truth is, there's an attempt to stop the poison from entering the victim's body. Objection! This is complete and utter nonsense. Not at all. The defendant withdrew the knife blade from the victim's body not to accelerate the woman's demise but to save her life, and the prosecution cannot deny the possibility. Have you not read the post-mortem? The cause of death was hemorrhage! Yeah, I know. These people don't know what they're fucking talking about. That's because by acting quickly to... Oh, up, 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 up. No, we have a better one. This is desperation. We have no proof. Yes, we do. Wait. In that situation, what the student should have done is waited for medical assistance to arrive. She must have had a strong reason, or the argument makes no sense. Well, I do. We do. Here we go. <laughs> the old Phoenix Wright move, just lie. This is such a banger, holy fuck. That's, that's literally it. What? This is this is really fucking setting me off. Okay, this. This also does it. Every piece of evidence in here does. Oh fuck. Extreme meiosis, people constriction was observed in the victim. Ah Being a yokel with no knowledge of forensic science, I have no idea, so please do tell me. 
The fact that this condition of the victim was noted in the report means it's an unusual symptom of death. Uh, well... Under normal circumstances, the pupils dilate when someone dies. If there was extreme constriction, that is most certainly unusable. What are you doing, you yokel detective? In the newspaper article, there's the following information about the stolen poison. Onset of symptoms occurs in minutes, ending with acute contraction of the pupils prior to death. What? If the defendant, upon seeing the victim stabbed in the back, happened to notice the pupils had constricted... Yes, as a medical research assistant, she would have suspected poison immediately, without doubt. Just giving expert testimony from the bench here. Uh, I think you'll agree this is very compelling evidence. You! You yokel student and yokel professor! Wham! I believe the defense has expertly demonstrated a credible reason for the defendant's actions. No! Mikitoba. I believe you are best placed to confirm or deny the veracity of the argument. You will tell the court the truth and details reported about in this newspaper, please. Uh-oh. It pains me to have to admit it. I'm afraid I don't know. You don't know? The toxin was kept under lock and key in my laboratory, certainly, but I was unaware of the theft. Do you mean to tell the court that the reports of this theft are unfounded? No. Uh, Your Excellency, without returning to the laboratory to investigate myself, I couldn't say... Ha! Listen to the bumbling academic. Unaware of the theft of secret state research from his own workplace until he reads of it in the newspaper. I take full responsibility for the incompetence of my supervision. This tweet was how I found out the poison had been stolen. Father! You dumb bitch. Oh my god, she's already so forceful. Hold it. <gasps> it's her! None of this is Professor Mikitoba's fault. It's all my fault! Uh, what? It was me. I was the one who noticed the poison we were developing had been stolen that day. So you knew? I'd been placed in charge of overseeing the project. It was the day that the professor and Soseki-san were interviewed together for the newspaper. I noticed some of the poison was missing. A tiny amount. Why didn't you let me know immediately? I was scared. The whole project was supposed to be confidential, but some of the toxin had been taken. So I decided to try and get it back before anybody else found out. Because I had a very good idea who the thief was. Thief. You don't mean! Yes, it was that dainty English woman. That's why I decided to join the little group of people going to the seaside. Inside the beach hut, I confronted her. But she sat on the stool in the back of the hut, smiling sweetly at me if she knew she was untouchable. That's why I killed her! Well now, whatever do you mean? And then, she got to her feet, before falling to her knees and collapsing on the floor. That's when I saw the knife in her back couldn't understand what had just happened. And then a moment later, I was seized with fear. The pupils of her eyes had they shrunk to tiny pinpoints. I don't believe it. In other words, you realize the victim was suffering from the effects of the stolen poison. My mind started racing. I hadn't seen anything past Miss Brett's lips whilst I'd been with her, which left only one possible way for the poison to have entered her body. The blade of the knife in her back. If it was an amount that had entered her bloodstream was small enough, she might have a chance. That's what I'd hoped. Really, I... I'm so sorry for staying silent all this time. This is a very... Suddenly this case has become insanely interesting. Your attempt to hide the truth of what has happened is not something that can be overlooked. However, I have noted the courage with which you confessed in the end. Thank you, Your Excellency. Oh my god. Ah! Do not be deceived. The victim collapsed before your eyes. Well, my mom be san if that's the case, you could explain how she came to be stabbed. Literally no idea. You have no conclusive evidence to prove that assertion. Nope, wrong voice. Oh! I have evidence! Oh, fuck. Alright, what are we working with? I'd imagine there would be no need for me to submit this evidence. But you brought this on yourself! Oh, what? Wait! This actually does not prove a goddamn thing. Wait. This, this is not... This is her pulling out the blade. And also, who took this shot? Wait a minute. This is like... This is like the, the craziest shot ever. What? Who took this? 
How'd they catch you in 4K? I don't believe it. No, I believe it. This shot sucks. sucks. Uh, wait a minute. I don't understand. How? Who took the photo? Thank you! Attention! That... <laughs> Attention. No, that's a really good question. How did you get this photo? Uh-oh. It's because they're shitty. Who was it? Huh? Oh, cool. So you're saying there was a third person in the room, and the theory of your case is that there were two people in the room, and you don't know who that person is? Wow, that's crazy. And you've delivered this picture that shows hands on a knife, which we've already established you did? Damn, that's crazy. Oh, good. So this evidence is bullshit, then. It's just, like, completely useless? In full knowledge of the fact this photograph has the murkiest of origins, you nevertheless believe it fit for submission as evidence in the Supreme Court. Hmm, I noticed you hesitated because you knew it wasn't reliable. Uh, well, I'm fucking... Uh, shut up. The truth that the defendant has admitted to pulling the blade... She's getting it. She's like, she said she took the blade out. This could have captured that moment. waste this court's time with your ramblings. Huh? What? <laughs> okay, let's look at the fucking photo. I... Well, it is our friend. Uh... Oh, it's got the same weird crack. Oh, god damn it. <sighs> yeah, I figured it out. I I know who took it. That was wrong. I know. I literally have the answer. I love this mentality. It isn't about if I can or can't. I must! What? <laughs> you can't possibly! But as you please enlighten us! Unfortunately, I'm unable to present a name. Uh, however, I am able to present evidence. What the fuck?! What is that? The newspaper again? Raucous England. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Look at the photo. There's a big stinking crack in the middle of this photo. Ah, yes. Huh, what of it? Branches from a tree. We're in a house. It's a crack in a camera. Oh, what do you know? Oh, what the fuck? Hmm, how interesting. Good gracious! The exact same pattern of lights. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, that, that tells us nothing. <laughs> yes, it's a shadow from branches. It's, again, we're in a ha hut. Come on. The two patterns are absolutely identical. It's a result of a camera defect. Obviously, it must have been a problem with the camera. The photographic device... Yes, uh, we can comfortably say the lens must be scratched. In the case, the scratch lens causes unwanted lines to appear on prints taken with the device. In short, the two co photographs under consideration here were taken with the same camera. Uh, but there must be hundreds of such devices here in the capital. 
It would be impossible. Uh, well, actually, it would be really easy because uh, there's a photo cred. <laughs> <clears throat> Damn, I'm super interested in this now. <gasps> Minai memo? Many memo? Meh. Me, me, mo. Um, Soseki saw. Ever since I returned to Japan, a reporter from the Shoyu News has been hounding me, following my every move. A reporter by the name of Raiten Many Memo. Stupid, so stupid. Holy fuck, Raiten Many Memo. Stupid, dumb. Yeah, it was that weird guy. <clears throat> He's got ink all over him, too. A camera to the left of him, a notebook to the right. There I am, stuck in the middle with right and many memo. She was saying that this picture was taken by... By many memo, yes! <laughs> Officer, find this newspaper reporter once and bring him into my courtroom. We will adjourn for a short recess in the meantime. Jesus Christ, this has gotten really big. Uh, as you say, Your Excellency... I want this knife. Oh, Jesus Christ, we had the murder weapon the whole time. Ah, yes. Uh, eh. <laughs> Many memo! <menu! laughs> <sighs> okay, good place to stop. Good place to stop. Perfecto mundo. When we last left off, it was the interim period of the first trial. I'm so sorry, Susato. I should have told you about the toxin. Ray, you should have. What's wrong with you? You have a strong sense of responsibility, I know. That's why you decided to shoulder the burden alone. No, that's not it at all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll move the camera around. Wah! Let's put the Nord VPN logo up by me too. There you go. Move these around. I hid important details from you, Suzato. I completely betrayed your faith in me. Hit me, Suzato. I deserve it. No, in fact, throw me to the floor. That's too good for me as well. Drag me through the city streets. Um, I'm not going to do that. Oh. Oh. I think it's pretty understandable that she'd doubt her, to be honest. But hey, what do you know? Betrayed your faith in me too. And as such, I've failed you as a lawyer. Oh, no, no, no. I think this situation has taught both of you a valuable lesson. Ray, can you find it in your heart to forgive me? No. Oh, they're very gay. Good for them. Good for them. I was scared, you know, when it happened. I didn't know what was going on. The English one was sitting at the back of the hut listening to what I was saying. I know it was you who stole the poison. Well now, whatever do you mean? And then a moment later, she suddenly got to her feet before collapsing on the floor in front of me with a knife in her back. It all happened right before my eyes. And you were the only people in the hut the t at the time? That's right, just misbred myself. There was no one else. So I don't understand how she could have been stabbed by like that. Hmm, a great mystery indeed. I still can't believe it happened. Now, I think we should discuss what's coming up at the trial. We don't have much time. The 
police have identified the poison on the blade. The trouble is, it's a new laboratory synthesized blend of alkaloids. The police won't have any way of testing it. Yes, without this chemical regent, it's impossible to detect the toxin. Chemical regent? I sent a colleague of mine off with some earlier to deliver to police headquarters. I think perhaps you should have some as well, though, just in case. Okay. What's the matter, Suzato? You're suddenly very quiet. The newspaper article. Exclusive deadly poison stole from UA Medical Research Laboratory. I'm wondering how the information got out if it was a government secret. It was the Englishwoman's doing. When the professor and Soseki-san were being interviewed at the laboratory, the English lady swanned in, said to Professor Mikitoba, Surely your guests would love to hear about your work on that substance there. Mm, it put me in a very awkward position, to be frank. But Soseki-san's curiosity had been piqued, so I had little choice but to give him a cursory introduction. So Soseki-san knew about the poison. That means that fucking reporter did, too. Many memo-san. this. Alright, let's meet Many Memo. It's time to steal ourselves once again, then. Defense Attorney Ryutaro Naruhoto. Stupid. I hereby call this court to order as we reconvene to continue the trial of Ray Membami. Prosecutor Auchi, have you summoned the new witnesses? Before I address that question, Your Excellency, I have some very important news to share. Oh? What the fuck? During the recess, with the collaboration of Professor Mikitoba's laboratory at Yume University, the police re-examined the knife that was used to end Miss Giselle Brett's life. Okay. Oh, too kind, Your Excellency, too kind. I was merely carrying out your instructions, of course. But judging by the man's swagger... Oh, no, this is Mickey Toba. And what were the results? This dagger... has... N oh, fuck. Hmm. Damn. Okay. In short, the accused's feeble excuse earlier has been utterly destroyed. Okay, let's check the fucking thing. Oh, God, that really, that is blood. Is there like a secret handle or something that I should? No, I don't think so. It's just a normal knife with no poison on it. Uh, let's check the uh, the regent, I guess. No, it's the regent. Not seeing anything interesting about it. It's German. German is the international language of medicine, my dear. Oh, God. Now, the prosecution is ready to call the new witness. Ah, the newspaper reporter. Good. All right, what are we working with? Mm -hmm. oh. Through the mouth. This guy sucks. Raiten Menimoto, stupid, of the show you news. I'm what people like to call a journo. What's a journo, father? Do you know? It's a journalist. I'm there when the news breaks, putting pen to paper to catch those scoops of their imprint the next morning. They don't call me. Oh my god. This guy sucks. Uh, 
I'm sorry. Um. Female student up to foul play defended by curious, handsome young lawyer in Supreme Court. Whoa. Gay? The readers will lap this up. We'll set it above the fold at 72 point in a five-leg format for the morning edition. H huh? Let's start with your name. Uh, it's Ryutaro Naruhoto. What made you want to become a lawyer? Uh, I wanted to reform our country's legal system. Uh, <laughs> I just borrowed Cosmosan's dream for a while. By the way, my name is Taketsuchi Auchi. That's Taketsuchi Auchi, the so-called dark horse of the Supreme Court. My objections strike fear into every defense lawyer's heart. <clears throat> no, no, the readers won't buy that. What? Okay, let's get some fucking testimony. Did you take this picture, you stupid ass bitch? Uh. Okay, so yes. My many momism. Good. Ah, uh, yes. I remember your face. You were supposed to be going back to the show you news offices after our meeting. But the scoop is, I didn't! Because that Englishwoman's words had piqued my journalistic interest. Is Brett's words? A criminal! Left to do as she pleases just because she happens to be a British citizen! It's horse dung! This country's judiciary is rotten to the core! The Supreme Court's rulings aren't worth the paper they're written on. The police are just imperial pawns! Okay. I'm warming up to this guy. Stay your tongue, young man. There are complex political issues at play. Hm. Anyway, I quickly jotted down those words she said in my many memo memo pad. Are you ready? I'll read it out. It's all here. Right, here goes. I should like to go with everybody to see your country's coast. A serious criminal going on some junket! The people need to know about this. That's why I decided to sneak after them. To get the woman's story so I could hammer her for the press. It's so funny, he's like licking the pencil. Whew. I saw it with my own journo eyes from start to finish. Through the viewfinder, my trusty's camera! Okay, well, good. Let's do some testimony, baby. Beach Hut was made of shoddy old reed screens. There were plenty of gaps I could see through. The English woman was sitting on a stool when the student girl came in and started arguing with her. Seconds later, the girl pulled out a knife. Throwing the English woman to the floor, she stabbed her in the back. My smoldering journo spirit burst into flames. Quick as a flash, I whipped out my camera ready to click. Uh, okay, well, this is a lie. No, 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 no. Let me cross X. Why was the story never published? That's a good that's a good question. Hmm. More pathetic excuses. Alright, let's do cross X. <clears> hmm. <throat> What made you want to see what was happening inside the beach hut in the first place? Journal instinct. Can you think of a better reason? Mm. Jerking off? Ah, I see where you're going with this. 
Brace yourselves, people. He's painting the journal as a voyeur. I'm actually gay. It's hardly slender. You had a camera and you were taking pictures without the woman's knowledge. Nope. Scoops no no gender. Man, oh, he's scoop sexual. Oh. He wants to fuck a scoop. He's only played the one FNAF. When I pulled back the reeds, I could see it all as clear as day. The English one was sitting on a stool when the student girl came in and started arguing with her. Hold it! So you saw Membami-san entering the hut. Yes, and she was raging. The argument, what was it about? You stole it, I didn't steal it, that kind of thing. Okay, that's, that tracks. Really started laying into it. She laid into their, God, stupid. The student's randings fell on deaf ears like a Japanese person listening to English for the first time. Uh, okay. The point is the woman in the dock was mighty angry which was the climactic moment I caught on film. Seconds later, the girl pulled out a knife, throwing the English woman to the floor as she stabbed her in the back. Hold it. That can't be true. Oh, good. When I first peered into the hut, I'm sure the English woman was on this stool in the back of the hut here. <laughs> then the next moment, as I was watching, the evil girl student entered the hut. After a while, the pair of them in the middle of the hut, arguing furiously. The English woman went for the student, but the girl dodged out of the way and in a flash, plunge the knife into her adversary's mouth. Fuck, that's like really good. Uh, we are boned. Whilst you were watching that terrible scene unfold with your eyes through the gap in the screen, did it not occur to you to prevent the tragedy? Journos have to be observers. We can't get involved. That is our raison d'etre. Didn't converse at all. No. Hmm. Put it in the testimony. I like this guy. It's gonna suck if he killed her. Oh, well, okay, we figured it out. We're talking about a murder scene. <laughs> okay, well. As a sculptor of stories, I have to be cruel for my art. Yes, that's spot on. Okay. Alright, we know what to do here. So, he says he never stepped foot in the place, but there's fucking footprints everywhere here. Objection. Or maybe we don't know what we're talking about. spoke with it. Okay, I never set foot in the hut, nor spoke with the English woman. I was only there as an observer. Well, it's got to be something in this amended testimony. 
So, perhaps in the article it describes that he spoke with her. This is hard. Not seeing anything that makes me think. It's kind of weird that one wall is missing, right? Let's take a look at this. Uh, no, that's the open door. That makes sense. If he's like right here. Although, where is this taken from? It's taken from like right here is where he would be. I imagine that's what the X is. Hmm. This is hard. He never spoke with her, nor did he set foot inside the building. It's not this, which has a bunch of footprints. Let me try something. Objection. Okay, that did not work. with the English woman. That's very strange. Oh. You know what's crazy is that this guy's name is R.M. Objection! No. I mean, I, I may be getting ahead of myself here. Something fucky about his photograph. Objection. It's just not the piece of evidence that we need to show, I guess. This is hard. What the fuck? This is the first case. Hold it. I didn't set foot inside the hut at all. We're scared. Maybe I did have the wrong impression of you. Hmm. is true. This can't be true.
Maybe he spoke with the English woman as part of this article. Objection! Nope. We're actually running out of stuff to to press him on. Legitimately, how how much more shit could there be? Okay. So it's not this or this. Photographic print. Ugh. That was wrong. Steve Velasquez, thank you for the sub. This is so weird. This is a hard one. I don't see anything. I could identify this with. Maybe she did do the murder? Good point. Objection. I mean, I didn't think it'd be that, but... He said he was, like, really scared. Never once set foot in the hut, no spoke with the English woman. So they're only as an observer. I just like, I feel like this one is, is the one, but I, I already did it. Objection. It's not. you figure it out at the same time? Objection. I'm, I'm really stumped. I am very stumped. Let me think about it. Okay. to that one. How did you manage to take the photograph? What about the rough weave of one of those? Hold it! Hmm. This is also a lie. Okay, let's pay attention to this again. When I peered into the hut, the English woman was on this stool in the back of the hut. Then the next moment, as I was watching, the student girl entered the hut. They started arguing. They got turned around. And she stabbed her. Damn. That's really bad for us. It's gotta be this one. But what could we show him? Possibly.
Objection. No, of course it's not the regent. Show badge. I think that's probably it. What haven't we shown? The photograph, the beach hut, the murder weapon, the regent, the photo, the poison. We've shown him everything. Oh, wait. No, there's no way to... There's no way to do this. Wow, this sucks. Objection. So we've shown everything on this one. How did he know she was on the stool? He was already watching. Have you pressed every statement? I believe so. Hold it. Yeah, we did this one. Okay, let's let's go back to that that statement. Hold it. Why did you choose to make a story out of the incident? Think of me as a sculptor, but I never discuss my personal life on principle. So that's something to boast about. No doubt your burning desire to see the truth exposed does it motivated you. That's it, that's brilliant. My burning desire to see something or else exposed. There must be a good reason why he didn't think to write an article about what he saw, though. Why would he not want to write an article? I mean, he might not want to write an article because he is the person that this belongs to. And he didn't want to be known as the culprit. This is hard. Rotate the pen. We know the pen says RM. <gasps> 
wait a minute. Hold up. Oh my god. Updating the pen now makes it valid. Stupid. Dumb. Many memo song. Do you recognize this fountain pen? This pen was found at the scene of Miss Brett's death. The murdered victim was gripping it in her hand as she died. What are you... If you took a look at the barrel of the pen, you'll notice the owner's initials are engraved there. RM. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Remember me. Is it a coincidence, I wonder, that your initials are also RM? No! Write in many memo. That's... The horse dung! Can't you see one of the central tenets of many memoism is being a pencil user? And yet, on your right hand, there is an ink stain. A uh, uh, horsey horse dung. Many memo son. Is it not the case that before she died, you met with Giselle Brett in that beach hut? Objection! Objection! Why should we listen to this absurd nonsense? Exactly. Show you news will stand behind me all the way. There must be as many people with the initials RM as our stars in the night sky. The defense has neither time nor the inclination to count every star in the sky. Hmm? There's another clue that undeniably proves who its owner really is. See, this is so fucked up is because now is when I should have had to rotate it. But... Got it! Got it! As well as the initials, there's an emblem on the fountain pen. An emblem you will, of course, recognize many memos on. Um... <laughs> In other words, the owner of this pen is an employee of Shoyu News, whose name is RM. Suddenly, the stars in this night sky don't seem so numerous, do they? Well, many memosan, how do you respond? No! Order, order, explain yourself. Oh. This is how the mighty Supreme Court works, is it? Using coercive tactics to have well meaning citizens reveal harmless secrets. Um. All right, then. I won't try to hide it anymore. Yes. I, on behalf of the public, conducted an interview with the English woman. An interview? You never mentioned this before. Okay, talk to me. Before, that evil little student girl showed up at the hut. Couldn't have lasted more than two or three minutes, that's all. It was just a brief exchange but it came to nothing. As we many memoists say, the people don't pay their dues for unworthy news. However insignificant you deem it to be, this court cannot overlook the meeting. Testify. So Seki, that man has a secret of his own. It's not a harmless one, it's big. What? Okay. Here we go. I asked the English woman for an interview, but she declined, so I left the hut without making a fuss. Then, watching secretly from outside, I saw the woman being stabbed and the other witness come running. The detective realized the victim still had a pulse, so he ran off to fetch help. That's when... The writer asked the woman a very significant question. He didn't say anything about that in his testimony, which is why I reveal it now. Oh? Uh, well, um, that's uh, true, yes. He did, and that's not all. The woman gave an answer. An answer that incriminates the accused. All right, what are we working with? 
This is preposterous. Wait, this is ouchy. This is preposterous. Why didn't you mention this before, you yokel hack? Everyone he doesn't like is a yokel. It wasn't even a conversation. Yes, I did pose the withering English rose a question. I don't deny it, but she could no longer speak. She was barely conscious even. Council, let's go. Yeah, sure. I fucking... I'm gonna ask about that. What was the question? Arg! Fucking say it. What'd you say? In truth, I've been catching crabs at the water's edge and building castles in the sand. Okay. But all of a sudden, from that little beach hut, a young girl's panic-stricken cries for help pierced the air. Okay. Ran up the beach to see what was happening to find the defendant leaning over the collapsed victim. As soon as Hosonaga saw Miss Brett on the ground, he sprinted off to get help. And then, just a moment later, I heard a faint moan from the dead Englishwoman. I nearly jumped out of my skin! But what did you ask her? I asked her, who did this to you? Oh, Jesus Christ. What did she say? She didn't say anything! But... Oh my god. But she never replied. Hold it. What the fuck? She never replied? I know why she said nothing. She was ignoring me! Uh, no, I... I... Soseki-san has really developed a dislike for the English, it seems. And truly, who can blame him? <laughs> I'm, I can't say I'm surprised at his xenophobia. Hmm? Well, yes, all right. She did respond in a manner of speaking. She lifted a trembling finger and pointed in the direction of the defendant. Fuck. That's disastrous. What the fuck? Why am I hearing about this now? That doesn't necessarily mean our friend. <laughs> Fiddlesticks, I say! The English woman did point her finger towards the back of the hut, but I was trembling and she was trembling and everything was a blur. Perhaps she was pointing in a slightly different direction. In a very different direction. Somewhere at the back of the hut where nobody was standing. Interesting. Attention! Your Excellency! Surely this proves the matter beyond all reasonable doubt. How could you possibly say this? Or can see there was no one other than the accused at the direction the victim was pointing. Not true. No, no, no. I have evidence. <laughs> The headline's writing itself. 92 point font. I have, we have evidence. We have a clue. There is an answer. One guy has opened the fucking thing. No, I got stuff. I got stuff. No, don't do it. Don't do it. I know. I know. Don't worry. I know. Okay, here we go. Your Excellency, I respectfully ask you to postpone your adjudication for the time being. Oh? Defense has an alternative theory that can explain who the victim was trying to implicate. An alternative theory? None exists. 
Objection. There was someone else present at the scene who could have committed the crime. What? Okay. Who was it? Oh, Jesus Christ. This is a hell of a question. like right here, right? Come on. Okay, fine. It just seems really far off. Take that. What the fuck? Now I'm confused. Was were they in this thing? fucking up here okay where are you proposing the culprit was concealed oh cons oh oh am I just stupid is that what's going on here Really dumb. <laughs> the true culprit was concealed in this location. Are you mad? You're suggesting the culprit was outside the hut. Ugh. What? Order, order, order. But student lawyer Nara Hodo-san Esquire, that makes no sense at all. Uh, you've just pointed out the exact spot where I was hiding to get my scoop snap. But I didn't see any suspicion. Uh... True? There is a way. Ah! And in point of fact, the defense can provide evidence. What the f Why are you lying? We are bluffing! <laughs> what the fuck? How can we possibly. Oh my god. Oh fucking god. Uh, the. the uh, Victim was stabbed from outside the hut. I, I don't fucking know, man. Uh, this, this does. There's no footprints. Right? Someone appears to have noticed what it is I'm referring to. I mean, I, there's a big fucking gash. Take that. Do you see the gash here? Behold! The screen -ussy! It's true that the hut in question has four walls, as you'd expect. However... By parting the reeds, a knife blade could penetrate them. Yes. The true culprit stabbed the victim from outside the beach hut. And of everyone present at the scene, there's only one person who could have done that. Brighton Many Memos. No! Attention! This 
This preposterous idea leaves me speechless. Look at the photograph again. The victim lies in the center of the beach hut. Are we to assume as part of this farcical scenario, the asylum is a knife thrower? No. I, I'm lost too. If you recall the testimony, I confronted Miss Brett. She took, she sat on a stool at the back of the hut. Yeah, 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 okay. Stool. Check out the photograph. The stool is almost pressed up to exactly where the knife would be. The slit is aligned perfectly with the back of the person sitting on the stool. The victim was killed while sitting on the stool by a stab wound to her back delivered through the reed screen. Having been attacked, Miss Brett rose to her feet instinctively, but then unable to speak, collapsed on the floor in the middle of the hut for the defendant. And that is the truth of what happened on the beach that day. Okay. This, this is absurd! That will do. It would appear we have a tacit admission of guilt from the witness. Oh, okay. I feel like we're not done here. Because there is one loose end we have not yet fucked up here. What of my growth? My growth of hope! I can't accept this! I won't! Okay, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is all very convenient. This is how the highest court in our mighty empire delivers justice, is it? Suppress well-meaning citizens' freedom to speak and branding them as criminals. But you're a criminal. We've established the victim was stabbed from outside the hut through the reed screen walls. And no one but you was in that place at the time to have his hand on the hilt of the blade. It's a perfectly logical deduction. So, your argument hinges on the location of whoever stabbed the Englishwoman, does it? Well, it seems a little irrelevant now. Where she was stabbed, how she was stabbed, it doesn't matter. Whether she was stabbed at all, it makes no difference if you think about it. After all, the trial's shown the whole thing hinges on something else. Poison, right? What are you talking about? Oh, boy. I'm talking about the poison. Yeah, okay, that's true. Let's ask the professor for a comment on the situation, shall we? I understand that a deadly poison you were developing was stolen from your laboratory, correct? And it's been shown the poison was administered to the victim as bread. Is that right? Uh, that is correct. And usual con uh, constriction of the victim's pupils are a sure sign this poison was used. I see, I see. So presumably that means that the victim already had the poison in her body before she was stabbed. How refreshing to hear the argument of a metropolitan mind. Precisely. It matters not a jot who stabbed whom in whose back. Because quite simply, the Englishwoman's life was taken by the poison. Okay, fuckhead. That can be explained by the poison being on the... Oh, no, wait. No, 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 no. We did. No, we did. We did use the regent. So let me get this down. The facts, as skillfully established by the defense in this trial, turn out to be a headline-making red herring. Is that about right? Yeah, that's that's pretty much true. Oh, really, Your Honor? Attempted murder? Do they give out medals for attempted physics? How, in that case, did the poison enter the victim's body? I have no fucking clue. The lady imbibed it. She killed herself. A bottle of carbonated water and a glass. Poison could have been slipped into either. Fuck. Well, what do you know? Hold it. Established? What are you talking about? Don't tell me you've forgotten. That's a little hard to believe, given that the person who established it was you. What? what you... Let me capture those wide eyes. Okay, here we go. 
here we go. I stabbed the Englishwoman, and that's the very fact that proves I'm innocent. Why would I have bothered to stab the woman if I had poisoned her? Incredible! When I heard the student girl and that pompous English murderer arguing, it got my goat. The courts weren't going to punish Brett for what she did. Someone else would have to see justice done. Um, so you admit it? You can blame this miserable country of ours. A country that bows to the pressure of foreign powers and lets murderers walk free? What kind of future can a country like that have? That's why I did it. I did what our pathetic leaders didn't have the guts to do. Slap bang in the middle of that charming lady's back. I plunged the blade of sweet justice right in there. Well, we have a motive at least. As someone who spends his life seeing that the truth is told, I feel really, really awful about giving false information in my testimony. But as it turns out, there was someone else who had it in for the victim and got to her before me. That's right. You guessed it. The student. Oh, fuck. Then why go in and argue with her? Gotta be something we're fucking up here. Okay, final cross X. Here we go. She was pure evil. But did our good-for-nothing government do anything? Not a chance. It's, it was my civic duty. So, yes, murderous intentions. Jesus. Hold it. I don't know. I have no idea why you did this. Reckoning. Jesus Christ. You would see this move pulled again years later, but we know it today as trying to pull a Luke at me. <laughs> when I heard the student girl in that pompous English murder arguing a god goat. What were they arguing about? What happened in the restaurant? The student girl was laying into the English woman for killing Dr. Wilson. Right. Right. The English woman jeered. Oh, good. She's here, too. I can't... I can't stand here and listen to this tripe. Ray, you stand accused here. I'm in the middle of some very important testimony here. Just keep quiet and listen. This awful man is making all of this up. Suzano, you have to make them listen. Return to the dock at once, member me san Hold it. Hold, hold on. Your Excellency, please. That journalist is not a trustworthy witness. He's a rotten, black-hearted, bigoted, dirty, great, peeping Tom. Whoa! Take it easy there. Mm. Oh, thank God. Hold it. We were discussing the stolen poison. 
Think about how she killed Dr. Wilson. It was with poison, and she had knowledge of the new poison. It no easy task to steal a secret toxin. They are searched when they leave. Getting the poison out would be very difficult. As I left, I would search from top to tail. I bluntly revealed the existence of the toxin we've been developing, see? So Seki-san expressed such an interest in it, I was unable to refuse. I gave nothing away. I'm very ashamed of myself. It's just that I really like poison. I wanted to look my old enemy in the eye. Okay, sure. But I confronted Miss Brett about the poison. I told her if there were an incident involving it, it just wouldn't be the university. The military would be dragged into it. The government. It would be a disaster. How did she respond? She curled those beautiful lips of hers and said she didn't know the first thing about it in English. It was you who wrote the article about what you heard. Deadly poison stolen. The details are far too accurate. Hmm. Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, uh, look at this. The entire article is almost exactly what I said to Miss Brett word for word. Erg. Okay. Memo-san. As a journo and a citizen of a free country, I don't have to reveal my sources. Shut up! My stories never stink. Whatever you say, it doesn't alter the facts. There's something I want to say, and I want it to go on record. Jesus Christ! This is the craziest testimony of all time! Okay, here we go, here we go. The point is, if you'd poisoned someone, there'd be no reason to stab them as well. Perhaps you doubted the efficacy of the poison. That's horse dung. Completely reckless. Um. Hmm. Why did he do that? Why did he do this? Why did he also stab her? He must have learned something from the conversation. About how the poison worked. That made him stab her. Oh my god. I figured it out. Objection. I figured it out. I can think of one reason. But before I explain, I'd like you to confirm something for the court. Did you glean all the information from this newspaper article about what you overheard outside the hut? Of course he did! After all, when we were all in the laboratory together, we were all told it was a terrible toxin. And there's one more important fact to consider. According to the witness, Memba Misan's verbal attack against the victim began as soon as she entered the hut. In other words, it would have been impossible for her to slip the poison in Miss Brett's drink. Where are you going with this, counsel? Menimoto-san has made it quite clear he observed every single thing that happened in the beach hut. If the defendant had found an opportunity, this man would have seen it. Which means Miss Brett couldn't have imbibed the poison while the defendant was present. In fact, it must have been administered to her before she entered the hut. Very articulately put. Started to press Miss Brett about the poison. At which point, Mamimoto-san overheard some worrying information. Here it is. The poison could not be readily obtained. So basically, you 
you know when someone is killed with it and you know where it comes from. In other words, it would be clear the victim's life had been ended by the use of this particular poison, which would reduce the number of suspects to a handful of people. Everyone in my laboratory is aware of the properties. None of them would be foolish enough to use it for some nefarious deed. Memba Misan being no exception. Therefore, we can conclude that whoever administered this poison to the victim was a lay person unaware of the telltale properties. In other words, someone like you write in many memo! It was you who stole the poison and administered it to the unwitting victim. But you quickly realized it was a terrible mistake because the poison caused such unusual symptoms and it was traceable. But you'd already given the victim the poison at that point. It was too late, so you hatched a plan to disguise the mistake. A plan that involved stabbing the victim in the back Attention. through the read screen. But what good could that possibly do? Isn't it obvious, counsel? The plan was to kill Miss Brett before the poison could take effect. Once in the blood, the poison caused the onset of pupil constriction, but he'd hoped to precipitate the victim's death before that happened, hadn't he? Exactly. Because without any revealing signs of the new secret poison's use, no one would have ever suspected. The effects of the poison mana would be too easily identified that the killer had a mask it's used, which he attempted to do by plunging a knife into the middle of the victim's back. Oh, holy fuck. Order, order, order. Well, uh, there are a number. Yes! I counter completely! The prosecution's evasive response clearly shows that in much the same way as he nurtures the remnants of his top knot, he is clinging to lost hope. Lo lost hope? Oh my god, she's calling him bald too. Oh no! You pathetic, useless, fallen samurai! I don't need a counter-argument. Oh my god. It should be blatantly obvious. I stole the poison, you say. Gave it to the victim, you say. Stabbed her, you say. Lots of fine theories. But I don't need a counter-argument because you don't have an argument yourself! Where's your evidence? Unfortunately, I have it. You make it sound all so plausible, don't you? But without evidence, it means nothing! I base my news on facts! What do you mean? I mean what the professor said earlier in this trial. It's all here, in my many memos. Every word, every slip of the tongue, all noted! No, I got it. This one's over. <laughs> you annoyingly handsome bumpkin. I got evidence, don't worry. Take that. The proof, Your Excellency, is the fountain pen. These magical pens somehow seem to have enough ink to write many thousands of kanji characters. They arrived in our country for the first time 15 years ago now. Bah! I swear by a weasel hair, calligraphy brush, and nothing else, these newfangled pens are a fad. Well, I love my fountain pen. Okay, that's right. Uh, fountain pens have a small reservoir in the barrel, into which ink is sucked up through the nib of the pen. Uh-oh. And just as it's possible to suck ink up into the reservoir, it's also possible to eject it through the nib again, of course. Well, many moto san Erm. When you saw that deadly poison before your eyes in the laboratory that day, you used your fountain pen to steal some of it by siphoning the poison through the nib and into the pen's reservoir. Ag! Attention! More absurdity! That never happened! True. We've heard that there were procedures in place to prevent thefts like this from the laboratory. But would anyone have thought to look inside a fountain pen? No. I, that, no, we wouldn't have done that. The pen was found in the clutches of the victim. 
was dropped in the scene by many Moto-san. The crucial question is, when was it dropped? The natural conclusion is that in your haste to act, whilst the victim was distracted for a moment, you dropped the pen after you emptied the poison from it into her glass! That could be any number of alternative explanations. For example, the witness could have been using his pen to write down details of conversation with the victim, and when shocked by her outrageous answers, the pen fell from his quivering hand. All right, bitch, well, guess what's in the pen? Poison. There ain't no ink in the pen. The pen was dropped after the poison that filled its reservoir had been emptied into the victim's glass. <laughs> so this is how our modern justice system works, huh? So what if the ink in my pen runs dry? So what if my pencil snaps? I always claw my way back into the game. <laughs> you claim I sucked the poison up into my pen? That's wild speculation. If you thought I could bring down a fine upstanding citizen with a trick like that, think again. It looks as though it's going to take one decisive blow to finish the matter. I've got a decisive blow, and it's time to blow ya. We've got evidence. Many Momo, many Memo-san. This is how our modern justice system works. In the courtroom, evidence is everything. Something you would do well to remember. Because we are well past the point of speculation at this stage, I assure you. Let's do it. What is that bottle? This is the chemical regent. It would be impossible to detect traces of it by any other method. Or, from another perspective, simply with this chemical regent, anybody at all could check for traces of the poison. A regent? One drop on the tip of the fountain pen is all it will take to solve this case beyond all reasonable doubt. The defense requests permission to carry out the test on the fountain pen at once! Urgh. Holy shit! He's going off! This isn't my fault! The Empire drove me to this! Trying to hold its head high as a civilized nation, bowing to foreign nations' whims, I took up arms in the form of the mighty pen in the name of justice and righteousness! <laughs> this guy rocks. Suzano! Oh, we're rotating! Holy shit. That was a Suzato takedown, wasn't it? Not quite. That was a Ryutaro takedown. This is the best game of all time. Holy shit. The instant the first drop of the region touched the nib of the fountain pen. It was clear to everyone present. When I saw it there in the lab, the poison, oh, Cusco's poison, the devil got a hold of me and I decided to do it on a whim. I excused myself and emptied all the ink down into the sink in the bathroom, washing the reservoir out completely. And then you waited for an opportunity to suck up some of the poison, didn't you? Into your fountain pen. Yes, that's right. Answer me one thing, Mini memo san Why did you steal it? For what purpose? Isn't it obvious to find out what it was made of and expose it in an article? I mean, it was a secret project after all. Too juicy for a journal like me to pass up. Then why did the Englishwoman end up dead? <sighs> I went into that hut intending to quiz her on her situation. A known killer, enjoying full freedom. Evading justice by leaving the country. I told her what I thought about it. She laughed in my face. Oh, what's this? A Far Eastern caveman purporting to practice journalism 
Really, you must learn the difference between reporting and listening at doorways, you ignorant plebeian. What did you call me? This country with its pretension... Pre pretensions to a justice system, to a free press, it's really very depressing. You see our superior ways in the West, yet you lack the mental capacity to emulate them. Get out of here, you oaf. Get back and crawl into the cave you came from. I mean, was he wrong? <laughs> Terrible tale. There's no justice in the press. After that trial nine months ago, I kept digging and digging to find out what happened in that courtroom. And finally, I discovered the truth. It was a cover-up. That's what it was. Oh, come on. Doesn't it strike you as strange? We're suddenly not allowed to convict a foreign national. Consular jurisdiction should never have come into it. And yet that puffed up English woman was going to sail away into the sunset a free woman. The only possible explanation is that behind the scenes some deal had gone down. What sort of deal? I'd done my research, dug up all the dirt, it was ready to be published. But you know what happened? The editor tore the article up. He came under pressure from the government, you mean? If our government is going to let criminals walk free, if they're going to crush the free press, then what choice do I have but to see the justice is done myself? Let's not forget many memos on that you committed murder and tried to lay the blame at the defendant's door. I'm sorry, but you're no better than Giselle Brett. The truth is, you have no right to talk about justice at all! Yeah... I suppose. <laughs> That's the end of it! It would appear we have reached a conclusion. Ah, yes, that's me. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Your Excellency, musing in a manly way here. Excellent performance. In truth, it very much reminded me of your cousin's exploits. Oh, thank you! The way he handled the trial nine months ago and the way you handled this one, it gives me hope we are genuinely entering a new era of justice in this land. It's very flattering, Your Excellency. Hearing the defense you put forward today made me feel most keenly that the future of justice system will be forged by you and your contemporaries. Thank you. So, Prosecutor Ouchie, do you have any final thoughts? Uh, Prosecutor Ouchie? Are you, are you gonna kill yourself? Silence! Oh no. Uh, ouchie, is it? Don't do it, Ouchie. You worked so hard on it. No. No. <laughs> is that haiku? <laughs> So fucking good. It's, it's so fucking good. <laughs> I can't believe how peak this shit is. Right, yeah, the trial. Hey, let's go. Hey, we get some, some little petals. That's cute. <laughs> this game is so good. Holy shit. 
<sighs> Court is adjourned. Okay, get me the fuck out of here. And I am going to bed. Do the the end of it here. It's over. My heart is still pounding my chest, though. All I can do is stay standing. Lawyers have such great responsibility, such a great burden to bear. Don't they, Narahodo-san? Uh. Suzato! Oh, You were so dashing! I'm so touched by everything. Oh, I'm gonna cry. We did it! be so standoffish. We're friends, equals, and the trial's over. It's time to celebrate with swagger. Oh, I'll think about it, right? fought for your friend to the very last. As your father, I'm extremely proud of you, defense attorney Ryutaro Naruhoto. Thank you. Anyway, time to bid farewell to Ryutaro, I think. I shall miss him in a way. It's back to Suzato Mikitoba for now. I'll never see him again, then. What a terrible shame. <laughs> uh. You two all right? Yeah, we just broke the law. That it's me. I don't... So dashing. So divine. No! Doubly dashing. And devilishly divine. I had no idea. He said it! Poor Soseki-san. Hi, Hosanaga. <coughs> We're just remembering Hosanaga. Ah, remember Hosanaga? Oh, we're just going through all these. John Wilson. Why did she kill him? And now that the culprit is dead, we'll probably never know the answer. Perhaps. On the voyage to Great Britain, we had a most unexpected encounter with Mr. Herlock Sholmes. Yes, I remember Sholmes. I, w I gotta get back to Sholmes, baby. My arch nemesis. The detective had a partner, a best friend. John H. Wilson. I just can't believe it's a coincidence. I think that the English doctor of medicine killed here in Japan nine months ago must have been a friend and partner of Mr. Sholmes. Uh, who knows? As you know, I traveled to Great Britain once myself to study. On returning to Japan, I took a professorship, but I also served another role as advisor to the government on diplomatic affairs. In that case, I'm sure you understand there are some confidential matters I cannot divulge to you. Why'd you summon me back to Japan? It's been two months. You collapsed with a high fever. You were growing weaker. That's what I'd like to know. After the long sea voyage, I found you in fine health, Father. Was there something in Great Britain you would perceive might inconvenience or harm me? Dear me. I'm sorry, my dear. I simply... Any memo? I've got one last thing to say before they take me away. Professor? Me? I know the truth. I know you had a hand in what went on in that visiting student's fate. Visiting student? Giselle Brett? No! The student of law! Huh? What are you talking about? Nobody here in Japan knows anything about it. They don't know the guy never made it to England, that he died on the steamship, and that he'll never... Oh. 
Oh my. The rickshaw has arrived. Thank you for dealing with him. Ha 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 ha. The trial's over. I'm not your excellency anymore. Merely your father's friend. Saishiro Jikao. You seem to have taken on a more dashing appearance, Suzato. Did you know all along when you started the trial? Ha 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 ha. A judge sees everything, Suzato. I couldn't let you take the risk. So I had a word in his ear beforehand. Shall we? Father. Oh, this guy's gonna fucking die. He's so dead. My Saishiro Sling. It's good stuff. Hello? Yeah, of course. Oh. Oh. Yes, it was awful. A visitor, your father, who wanted to ask about the report. It seemed to be taken with a particular part. Then the next day, he sent the telegram to you. What was the part? I don't really know exactly. The two terrible cases? Your father seemed to concern himself with the second case. Interesting. Haunted Lodgings. Have we played this case? Am I crazy? No. Hmm. So, the mystery of that English woman's death is solved, thank goodness. And having stood in the Supreme Court now, I think I can comprehend a little better. How you must be feeling as you fight for people's freedom in a foreign land, Narahodo-san. Is she not gonna go back? But actually, I'm writing to you today because of another matter. I met Sosik-san and we talked about that second case he was involved in. Father has said nothing to me, but I feel certain of it. That case holds the key to some great unsolved mystery. My notes on the case should still be in the office, tucked away at the back of the shelves on the left. Perhaps you might like to look over them again. Today, for the first time this year, it feels as though summer has arrived. The sky is a brilliant blue. She's not gonna be with us for the rest of the game? It makes me long to see you again. Yours, Susato. And what's the fucking point? Clouded Kokoro, the Great Departed Soul, Twisted Karma, Karma, and his last bow, the Resolve of Ryunosuke Naruhodo. All right. Well, maybe next time. Good night, everybody.